Hi Icelandic. I can't say. I'm too far away from the screen. Idyllic. Eclectic. God. Honestly, too far away. I can just about make out the words. That's with my glasses on. So I'm just a bit busy today winding up um, a walk for weaving. So it's just just away from the fireplace. I actually put the fire on today. 15 degrees and it feels like winter. So we've got forecast, really bad overcast, heavy overcast skies until I think Tuesday when the sun will finally come out. So I've um, <clears throat> the question I asked on last week's chat about um, thickening up a lace weight BFL just a silk and um, oh do you know I can't remember what else was in there or oh, Stellina yarn. Um, so I actually never whole applied it the other day and I didn't even have to look at any videos on YouTube. I was quite chuffed with myself that it just came to me dead easily. I have attempted it before, but not with such a thin yarn. So, um, yeah, that's what this is made from. So I'm quite pleased with it. So I've ended up dyeing it in um, copper, coppery colours and um, coffee and aubergine sort of tones. Because I want it to be quite a rich um, looking warp underneath these muted tones of beige and cream and hints of he uh, wheat olives are in there and um, khaki so yeah that's I just wanted something to stand out a little bit more on my warp than on my actual uh, what's the word I'm looking for in comparison to my weft so yeah so that's what I'm just doing at the moment this swift drives me potty. I can never get it to just sit there for play. Move my class out of the way. So I've got my swift on the go and I've, it never screws in tight. So I've always got to wedge it with something like a piece of thick card or something in place. And I'm just going to gently tease that over the edging. Oh, let's take off my um, wrapping strands while I was dyeing it. Oh, that's gone a little too far. And my string for holding it when I just take it out of the dye tray. Lazy Kate and Coco Yarn, hello ladies, how are we? Oh. So, um, yeah, what have I been doing this week? What have I done this week? Oh, I put up two videos of how to make your own DIY uh, warping board during the week. So that was fun. It sat outside at the moment waiting for me. So I'll put them on my YouTube channel this week. Coco Yon, how are you doing, sweetie? You keeping all right? I've not seen you around for a while. Diva Dog, hello, sweetie. How are you doing? So I'm just winding up my warp here. It's a quiet weekend. It's really weird outside. Very subdued, very overcast. It always seems to affect the birds I find and we get loads of birds out the back. So, ooh. I can make dizzy falling asleep watching this. 
I'm fine, sweetie. I'm doing all right. As, uh, I've just been busy doing that filming for making my warping board and everything up this week and dyeing up this warp and spinning that in the evening. I'm not trying to get um, how many I end up doing. I think I end up doing about, 200 and, about 220 yard bobbins um, Navajo applied. So I've got two already warped up into a big braid for putting on my um, helping hands and I've just wound up another two lots. So I just want to make sure that I've got more than enough. Hiya Deborah. Deborah, I haven't forgotten about the Kerry Hill. I just haven't had a second. The first batch I did I wasn't happy with. So I will get that sorted out and I will let you know about it sweetie and I hope you've had a good week. So yeah, so I've had orders sent out this week, um, one over to the States again and a couple UK ones. So you should have all had them by now, but I do send them second class. Um, so they sometimes take a little bit longer than you'd anticipate. Sometimes it surprises me, I can send something second class and it'll turn up the next day. Um, so what else, what else? Yeah, so I'm just doing this and I've been looking through my weaving book for ideas for patterns for weaving and Deborah you asked me um, about <laughs> you said on my, on my YouTube yesterday that you'd like to see what happens next and you did you mean that you want to see my actual process of my weaving oh that'll be fun a lot of swearing goes on <laughs> not really it's a pretty quiet task apart from the fact on the, this we uh, this loom because it's old it does squeak a lot um, but yeah i'm quite happy to do that as maybe yeah so i could always do that as um like normally i do two videos a week and then put up my live chat so i might do that as one video through the week as i put it i say it's a personal project once it's done and if it's turned out as good a stand as i hope it will then it will go on my website to be sold at a later date um but yeah i'm quite happy to put that on there because it'll be full of it'll have locks in there there'll be a couple of different designs of weaving through it because i don't stick with just one pattern um, i like to do freestyle weaving so i'll be including my art yarn in there and my hand spawn and locks and i do have some gorgeous pewter silk um sari silk pewter silk pewter gray sari silk ribbons that I buy from a lovely lady up in Edinburgh from using him a weaving so I want to put some of that in between as well and then there'll be slight lace work and stuff in the weaving I don't do the standard all the way through same pattern to the very end that drive me potty but I like to mix and match it so I might hire Liz I might do like two maybe three different patterns throughout and maybe do a tabby weave in between to create like the um, window panes and things so I can insert ribbons and, and silks in there on my locks. But yeah, if you want me to do that, I'd be quite happy to put up an episode of my weaving once a week. So there's the art yarn that I'm putting in with it. Still waiting on that flaming postman to arrive at your order. Having a couple of us listening, sign off around 12 30, listen to Phil Lake no problem I'll, i'll put it up on my youtube anyway for anyone that's missed it um yeah it is odd because i know i posted it first thing wednesday morning which means it would have made the first collection post at half 11 um and it should have arrived yesterday but you might be having issues with covid at the sorting office and short staff and parcels down here we only get parcels on a saturday we don't get normal let, um, letters yeah okay so you want me to do a bit of weaving so that that's linda said that as well um so yeah you might just be having issues on the um might be just having issues with the postal uh, postal service and lack of because i know my regular postman's not been on the rounds we've got this young guy it's quite funny because i still can't get to my front door after moving my studios around it's still got stuff in that i need to put in places so um yeah We've, it's just it's not everybody's back up to working standards at the moment everything's a little bit higgledy piggledy Liz just dropping in for a more while there's cakes in the oven all right sweetie well you know you can catch you later and I will be dropping you a message I was going to chat yesterday but 
the day just passed me by so i'll pop in and, and have a chat with you later on good color yeah it's um it's i wish i never even thought forward thinking i should have nipped upstairs and got the fibers that i was using in it but in this there is so there's lots of sari silk in there it's um a brown sari silk with a mixture of different colors in there silk noil and it's um called chocolate cake so that's what i used in there and i've also used um camel and i think it's camel and merino i've used some alpaca in there as well um there is shetland um what else have i used in that and i think there's a dash of merino so it's all the colors are harvest so there's hints of greens barley and wheat sort of colors in there and then you've got these coppery colors oh that was the other thing that i used it was bfl and tussa silk blend that i dyed up which i've still got two lots of on the off chance that i need to do some more but if i don't use them they'll just get blended up and put on the shop so that's all those colors like the little pops of orange in there and then you've got the tints of green uh, green in there so there's like two or three different shades of green in there and there's khaki khaki and creams and stuff so it should turn out really really pretty with the pops of color in as well so i'm just going to wind up this um art yarn i'll probably just put it into a ball because i'll just end up having a fight with it trying to get it through the bobbly bits on my ball my cake winder so how is everybody anybody got any topics to talk about today i'm trying to think i haven't got anything that's miffed me this week i've actually had quite a good week we been watching the news about that um kabul thing my heart felt awful the other day though when i read about um slater the guy slater the ex uh, military policeman trying to get his staff out from kabul so yeah that sort of made me a little bit upset this week but apart from that it's been fine next door but one's house is on the market and there's another house on the market up the street and there's still one pending um contracts so yeah new neighbors first time for me in 18 months going uh, going out for lunch oh wow i hope you've got your glad rags on when was the last time we went out for lunch um do you know i can't even think i'm sure it was recently then again, we've got a wedding to go to in a couple of weeks a wedding that was cancelled for last year and we just got the invite through last week so we've got a wedding to go to in a couple of weeks time so i'll be getting my dress out in my heels out my posh shoes and my handbag which is so not me so yeah we've got a wedding to go to in a couple of weeks so that'll be nice i don't get often invited out to public events <laughs> i wonder why <laughs> so that's that to um as a bit of a knock on effect on plans and everything else because at the end of the day they've held off their wedding for a year and not everybody will be able to make it again this year anyway because they've still got weird stuff going on so there we go it doesn't look so pretty i almost don't want to use it i just want to stick a big ribbon on it right what's next i'll do another one let's uh, find the end to this you can tell i only did this one last night it's still not settled oh so plans for next week so video wise i think i may do a little research lovely colors thank you sweetie they're very very not calming definitely calming and then with this color on top so you've got that and i know it looks a little bit in your face but once you've got that on there and then this one with the greens it definitely will calm it down and you'll only see little pops of it coming through on the pattern work so 
it should turn out quite nice and then I might not bother having tassels at the bottom of that I might incorporate locks into the ends um, for my tassels so it end up with a fringe of lovely curly locks and I've got them here So I've actually got these that I dyed up. Now I've actually got some of these to go in the shop. But I wanted to not put them on the shop until I made sure that I had enough for what I needed. So these are the locks that I've dyed. Very similar to those. So I thought it actually might look really, really nice to have that um, as a fringe. And then you won't see that, which I think will look a little bit naff on the ends of the shawl. I think this will look a bit more dramatic and really quite pretty. So those are the colours I'm going for with my locks. Um, what was I doing? Oh, that was it. You see ya. Um, yeah, so... So it looks like once I've done... If I do my warping... If I do a video on my warping... Or the finished product... I gifted it to a neighbour up the street. And I totally forgot to take pictures. But the next time I see Julie up the street, if she's got it on, I'll get some pictures of it. I totally forgot. To, I meant to. And I was walking out the door saying to Phil, I'll just get some pictures of it. And I walked straight out the back gate and up the top of the street with it. So, yeah, completely. Honest God, like a brain like a sieve. I'm just going to take some pictures of this. Didn't. Walked straight out the back gate. Hiya, Hilly. Thought you were on holiday, love. Oh yeah, so stupid joke. But no, I will get. I'll, I'll. I'll pop up. I'm supposed to be seeing today. She's supposed to be bringing me down her old um, greenhouse. So, I'll be able to. Um, I'll let her know then that I want some pics. So I'll have to pop up and I'll get some because she's got a lovely secret garden at the back of her garden. So I'll get some pictures of it up there. Um, but yeah, I'm getting a, they were getting rid of one of their greenhouses, so I'm getting that, which is cool because I do have plans to grow Dyer's plants. Not necessarily for me to think you like, but plants like Coreopsis and um, Dyer's Marigold um, and Chamomile and um, Madal, Madaroot and Woad or Indigo and that sort of thing. Um, in case, all right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know, Linda. Sorry, I see the name, and my brain just doesn't. My brain's a little bit slow at catching up with things like that. If I get knocked off my my thought process, it takes me a while to sort of just remember that and keep that stocked in. But yeah, I know who you are. <laughs> if I say you, if I call you by your code name, it's because we're secret squirrels of the fluff community. Yeah, my, my brain doesn't work like anybody else's because I'm a fibro. So things have got to be done repetitively for me to actually start it to sink in. And I can't do things, I can't change subject really quickly. I find it like um, like my eyes glaze over sort of moment for me to sort of just catch up for a few minutes and then I, I can go on to that other subject, especially you have a conversation and somebody just drops in straight away. I'm like, wow. Collect some curly dock seeds and have a go at dying with it. Yeah, try and um, grow some rhubarb as well and you can use them for mordant. I've got loads of it out in my back garden. So, yeah, I was thinking it might be something I might experiment with next year. Um, and maybe base a couple of my videos on doing that thing from a, a beginner's perspective. I have dabbled a bit in natural dyeing, but usually just kitchen experiments and things like that and with coffee tea saffron um turmeric which comes out the most amazing yellow but it will fade through time so that's what i'm thinking about for doing next year and when they asked me if i wanted their um one of their greenhouses the other day and it's only a small one i was like yeah i'll take it i'm quite happy i don't mind so, yeah, that's what my plan is for next year, is to start growing um, natural dyeing flowers and petals and stuff like that and then sell them on my website. Oh. I mean, I can't sell seeds and stuff because you've got to have a license to do that. 
but I can sell the petals in packs so you can boil them, grind them down and everything else that you need to do to create your dye, your own dyes. So yeah, that's what my plan is for next year. But the greenhouse will definitely help me be able to achieve that and I can do it like an ongoing once a month diary on my YouTube channel as well. And it'd be cool to get into getting into um, natural dyeing and I've got loads of reference books for natural dyeing up there on the shelf. I've just not had the chance or the opportunity but things are starting to slow down now. I've got to still get my bathroom sorted out. I've t said to him that it needs to be done by next May. Um, so we need to get that done. Hopefully we can get a plumber. We just can't get plumbers and stuff like that full of the money up here at the moment. They're all booked up till next year. It's just really, really hard to get a hold of anybody because obviously last year they all lost out in jobs and people had work to do. Well, I've had work needing done as well, but I just can't get it done yet. And I'm near three quarters of the way to having my money saved up for getting a drum carder, an electric drum carder. So I'm just on a waiting list for that now. Um, and I need to take some pictures of my head alone and get that put on the marketplace and then once that sells that's I've only literally got about 150 quid to, to save up um, to get that ordered so Paul Britton's put me on his waiting list so it's anywhere between 8 and 12 weeks at the moment this has been inundated with people wanting drum carders which is great if it's for personal use but Oh god, it's a flaming fly. The last thing I want is inundated with the new blenders popping up on the scene, willy-nilly, because they fell in love with the, pro the, ha the hobby last year. Now they've got a filled stash. Yeah, go away. <laughs> it's a bad enough blinking environment as it is, trying to get yourself found. Without everybody else jumping on the bandwagon. <laughs> oh. Oh dear. And the price of an electric card is, is not cheap. Nope. Squish this on. Can I get it on? Yep, I did. I hate this Swift. Can't, oh, it's so annoying. So Hayley, did you not go on holiday? If so, where did you go? Did you just go visiting? I'm going to, are you going to, um, have you just been visiting fr friends and family or have you actually been on your proper holidays? Oh, tomorrow you're going. Cool. I dropped you an email earlier on. Um, so drop me a message later after this. Because I know you're going on your holidays. So where are you going? Oh, do you know this Swift drives me potty. No matter what I do, I can never get it just to sit tight. West Coast just in time for the rain. <laughs> no, well, we've got here... Um, Am I West Coast? Yes, I am West Coast. We've got on Tuesday, Wednesday, up to 24 degrees. We've got heavy overcast now and we've got rain forecast through Sunday night to early hours of Monday morning, which, thank God, means I don't have to go out and water my garden. Um, but, yeah, so we've got at least Tuesday, Wednesday of really, really hot sunshine, so you might be all right. I've lost me end. There it is. Yeah, so you might get a couple of days of um, decent weather. But they've already given this storm that's coming in from America. I reckon they're going to hit us after next week. Hurricane, um, was it Storm Larry? Storm Larry. Yeah, Storm Larry they reckon is coming in 
after we've had this blitz of a heat wave. It's been cold here, so the warm sunshine would be fab. Well, yeah, it's been 15 degrees even through the night the last couple of days, but we've got really, really heavy overcast, so the sun's not getting through at all. I'm still, I'm getting stuff dried, but it's, um, it's not, it doesn't make you want to get your shorts and t-shirt on, that's for sure. Oh, I've got a striking cat at the door. She's not coming in. She's a flaming menace. I'm like trying to hoop that in there so it doesn't get tangled up. Um, yeah, so you should get some pretty decent weather. We've had the coal fire on. Because it's just, with it's been in this old house, it does get pretty cold. Well, I'd have to say cold. Chilly. And if I'm dying locks, I've got locks soaking in the sink again. There will be a couple of new, there'll be, I th I'm hoping about four, maybe five new sets of locks on the website next week. I do have two that I died up last week that I haven't got around to sorting out yet. Um, I'll be trying to get these on top of these advent sets. But they're all practically ready now. I just need to start packing them up. Um, so I'll get the locks sorted out tomorrow and get them on the website on Monday. You have the same thought, Swift thought it was all right. I got it from Amazon oh, a couple of years back and it was about 24 quid. I thought, oh, that's not too bad. But the screw, the screw where the, this ear split within the first two days of me using it. So now I have to push it up into place. And then this bit down the bottom, the screw bit, pops all the time so i have to use like i'm using a weird fish card now at the moment just to if i can screw it in so far and then push that underneath and it seems to work but it's it's flipping annoying yeah it's it's not the best i mean it does and i don't to be fair i don't do um swift work that often thankfully but this should this usually i would have put straight onto my cake winder from my spindle um so the amount of times i've stalked the house for something that's got a chunky of grip on it just to make it stable <laughs> or hung it from a drawer so it's like the other way around just so i can actually work with it especially when i've done um yarns at christmas but i'm not doing them this year i did do the 12 days of advents last year but i'm not doing them there's no point i think last year i only had two people which was fine but you guys don't know if you're doing my yarns and even though i've sold them on my website in the past they just don't go so i don't want to invade on somebody else's territory i mean i'll put hand spun yarns and stuff like that on there but if they don't sell they don't sell because i'll just use them anyway Especially now I'm getting back into doing my weaving again, which is always a bonus. So I'll leave that one for now. What else have I got to do? Oh, I've got another one. Another big skein of wool. And then I can go and warp up another section. Yours is a broken arm and flies out and hits everything. And the cat. <laughs> <laughs> the only place I can get this to work without me having to have a fight with it is right next to my TV computer screen. So it sits because my worktops in there are really quite thick and chunky. Um, it has been known to bash off things and make the old clickety click, clickety click. But yeah, I don't often do this. But when I was um, ply uh, plying this up the other day, Hilly was saying the Navajo trick, it actually worked. It's, cut, it's turned out really, really good. Fingers crossed for warping, but it should be fine. Um, I didn't even have to look up any um, YouTube channels. I had tried it before, and I thought, no, I'll give it a go. And it was so easy to do once you got, pardon me, got into a rhythm of it. I was off. So I ended up spinning up um, six, seven, seven bobbins worth. So it's about 220 yards on each of these skeins. So I've got just under half a cone left, um, which is what these are all plied with, the same will from that. So that's just single hand spun yarn plied with the BFL to Silk with Delina. So yeah, so I was quite I was quite happy with that. I was really chuffed a bit to myself that 
I knew exactly what I had to do, but you know what it's like? You try something new and you're a little bit anxious and you don't want to waste something. But I think if I'd have done it on a thicker, like um, a manufactured jar, I did find a couple of bowls upstairs the other day that I'm taking at the charity shop. Um, and I thought to myself, well, if I go and do it on that and get frustrated because it's so thick, then I probably veto this for a couple of weeks until I build up the courage to do it. So I thought, no, just go and do it. Have a go, and if it doesn't work, then you can go and try it on something else. And literally, once I figured out how to get it started on a loop, um, I was off. So I was quite happy with that. Hiya, Womble Mark. So, yeah, quite chuffed. So I might end up doing a video of how to do Navajo playing on my thing. I've written it in my book to do that. But yeah, the Swift is my... I dread bringing this thing out. And thankfully though, unless it need, anything needs washing, I usually just wind them straight into cakes and then wash them afterwards. Because once they've sat on your bobbin for a day or so, they just settle right down as long as you've not overspun them. But we, even when you've overspun them, I find that once you've washed them and set them, they're quite happy to just go and... Um, just settle right down and chill out or if you're knitting straight from the from your bobbin after a couple of days it's sitting there you can see where the extra twists are and they'll just um smooth out don't bother me if they look a little bit over twizzled when i'm crocheting or knitting and i remembered i've still got that shawl to finish off the edging on it's sat in that flaming basket i'm looking for it the other day i was like i'm sure i finished it no, it was sat under 250 grams worth of locks for the Christmas Advents that I'd sat and plucked a few weeks ago. Oh, 20 to 1, I've got 20 minutes or so left. So what projects are everybody working on today? Taking advantage of this overcast, horrible weather. Oh, God, it hurts my arm. Yeah, so I've got, uh, I think, I think I've got, all right, I've got teaswater locks in the sink now soaking. So I'm hoping to get some brand new colourways on the website with them this week. So I'm hoping for five, maybe six new colours on there. And the ones that I've got left, I'll, I'll put some aside for myself for my, um, my bats and stuff. But I will just be doing some big jumbo bags to go on there just a mix eclectic mix of different colors all just thrown in together for a budget price so yeah because they just sat on my, on my shelves all in their bags and i don't use there's too much for me to use myself all in one go so I might as well just put them all in one set on the website just a mix set i think and i've got um Roving's already dyed up and some silks and stuff like that for bats next week. So see what my day looks like tomorrow and I'll get them sorted out for listing Monday, Tuesday. Trying to get some handspun dried for socks to take away with me. Oh. Trying to think of another way that you could, because you've not got a coal fire or wood burning stove like I have, have you? So I'm all right. I can. I mean, these were still done. I took them off the line this morning, and um, uh, yeah, took them off the line this morning. Stuck them in front of the fire for about an hour this morning. And they're fine. Spinning and skiing. Yeah, it's a laborious task, isn't it? Spinning's not so bad. Also, taking a support spindle and some yak and silk. Happy time. Yeah, I can. I bought a load of yak last time I went down to um, Wing and Wool. But I can never, I can't always find it on the website all the time. But then I suppose at the moment, getting things in that are unusual is a bit of um, a hit and a miss. But I do like yak. Yak's really nice. Right, one more skein to do. And then we'll go outside in the garden and I'll get me, um, start warping up my next lot. Because I'll be warping this up this afternoon. Watch a movie, warp up my loom. 
I'm going to plump that on there and I will do that in a bit. Oh, flaming wind is going to fall off again. So chuffing and oying. Right, so where are my battery power? Let me see. I'm only at 23. I can't go outside. I could put it there. Bear with me a sec. I'll just go and get the frame. Oh, right so that's one thing get these so I've done one already definitely doesn't look too bad all those brown colours and all the solid colours have broken up into each other and it's come out really quite I'm chuffed to bits with how it looks and it's really rich and autumnal so that's one just need to get the others done now So where did you get your support spindle from, Hilly? I've never tried one before. I sometimes think that it'd be great if I had someone nearby that I could borrow one off to have a go because I don't think buying something just to see if it's not going to work. But it's my shoulder again, the flaming shoulder. I can't do spindles. It's definitely easy for me to do my own spinning wheel. Or when the ducks have come off the brooding and nobody arrived, no one knew, no ducklings. So I've got to go out there sometime today and go and lift all the eggs that are underneath that flaming rabbit hole, uh, the rabbit hutch, the chicken house. Oh, where's my box? Oh. So I've got to get that done this afternoon, which will be a mission. wrong no it's not It just takes me a minute to get my rhythm. It's like trying to remember a pattern. So this measurement that I've done here, this will work out about 15 and a half. Because from there to the bottom is just over three foot. I think it's three foot and, I don't know, one and a half, two inches or something. So, um... It'll end up working out about 15, nearly 16. Favourite was from USA and Northern Spindles. Simon from Adelaide Walkie. Simon makes all his own. It's quite good at that. I know Liz, she's around later on, uses um, kick spindles and she swears by them. I just find them a bit much on my shoulders. Flint scarf. Oh. 
Get in there. Right. So I've just, what, what did I order yesterday? I ordered handwoven magazine from a, I found a website that in the UK that does um, unusual or rare magazines that you can access in the country. And I actually think they've got that spin magazine as well. Couldn't find it, but I think they have because I did see a mention of it. But I bought this um, handwoven magazine yesterday just so I could get some other ideas because it had um, inlay weaving in it. And I was like, oh, oh, can't beat a bit of inlay weaving. Would love to try a kick spindle. Yeah, I wouldn't mind having a go one. I don't want to buy one and then find out that I just can't do it. Right, you're going to have to come off, mate. I'm just getting them away at the moment. I've got a chilly neck. It's because it's not a summer outside and I hate my neck being cold. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to have a go at one um, to see if I'd like it. I mean, because they're, uh, they're not expensive, but in my mind, if something's like 20, 30 quid, I'm like, right, what could I buy with that? on the off chance and that's what ends up happening I end up buying something else because at the moment I want a new um, weaving hook for pulling through but I want one of the really long ones and it's about 20 odd quid and I want an, another Swedish boat shuttle for my loom so that's 25 quid then I have to buy the perns to go with it as well so it starts to get like right what else do you rather want what would you rather have but then pen up for something that you might not actually enjoy. So that's what always happens to me. Uh, oh, I've forgotten which way I'm going again. It's because I've got my board upside down compared to what I had it yesterday. So, um, yeah, there's not much really, so it's been a really quiet week, a nice stress-free week, which makes a change. Um, Advents are halfway sorted, so they just need to start getting separated and packed away. All the mini bats are, um, I think I've only got three lots of mini bats left to do on the Christmas Advents. Um, I've just had some... Christmas extras arrive for my American customers because I want to get their stuff sent out as soon as possible um, but yeah not much else going on it's been I, just, I like it when I've got a quiet week it means I can just get on with what stuff I need to do or want to do for myself Over, under, and around. Okay, so next week videos. Well, what day are we on? We're all in September, so it's a couple more weeks before I do my breed study, which will be um, Wednesday day I'll from Durham. So I'll be doing that probably the last week in September. Because I don't want to do them every month. I think every other month or near as to the next month as possible, I think it's a good plan. Um, but yeah so I'll be doing that and this month's Batty Club is Perrindale so if anybody wants to um, have a go at this month's Batty Club just give us a shout I've got Heather sorting out the stitch markers for this month as well um, but yeah that's that's it ladies and gents if you're watching later um, nice and quiet I'm always looking for things to do so right so next week's videos will be me weaving and doing my style of weaving I've completely lost where I was going on that one there we go that's why it doesn't look right um, weaving and I think during the week I might do a bit of dyeing to blending 
so that will be a two part video so the end of the week going into the following week for, and then I can show you my listing stuff then so I might do some Tweedy style bats on my video show how I do my textured ones um, yeah so I think that's what I'll do next week I'm just looking forward to getting this green ice when it comes down because that's going to be a mission in itself and get that scrubbed out and cleaned and disinfected before I can get putting any seeds in and then find there's a nursery down south I think it's in Dorset I think or maybe Hampshire and they specialise in um, kitchen gardens and dyeing plants and they actually do sell seeds as well so I need to go and hunt them out again and then look at prices for getting dyeing dyeing plant seeds for my greenhouse oh. Probably string with me, have I? No, my string's in the other room. You've ordered from them. The, yeah, it's a, like a nursery. They only started, I don't know, maybe about 10 years ago or something. Didn't get the seeds planted this year, though. Yeah, and I'm sure they do seedlings as well. I can't remember how I found them. I think it might have been my friend Sasha over in Norway. She does she does natural dyeing. She actually did a dissertation for a university um, on dyeing plants. Um, Vlad, oh, I can't remember her, her account on Thingy, but she does all her yarns and natural dyes, everything, and she does workshops as well. Um, she does all that, and we were talking about it last summer about when she was trying to source certain, I think, woad seeds and maybe indigo. I can't remember, she couldn't find anywhere. Um, that wasn't in America, so I, I think I ended up finding her that way, or I'd already knew about her anyway. So I'll look them up. But um, I can't even remember the name of the farm or the nursery. But they do loads of different ones. So I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll get woad and I would definitely get madder root because madder takes at least two to three years before you can harvest from it. Um, obviously, the old Coryopsis and Dyer's Chamomile. Um, and th there's a couple of others that I actually want to get for different shades. And I've already got rhubarb at the back of the garden, so that's an easy enough mordant. Let it dry out and then, um, no, not dry out, cut it to order and send that out and then use those as well. At the end of the day, there's plenty of research out there, but there's not many people supplying the actual stuff for doing, apart from Fiery Felt. Is it Fiery Felt? She does, that's where I got my dyes Coryopsis from her a couple of years ago at Cockermouth Woolfest. Um... So yeah, it's definitely a route I want to go down and to be able to wo weave um, shawls and things in natural dyed wools will be really, really good. And it will get me to a different marketplace as well for reenactors wanting to source that sort of stuff that can't provide it themselves. So I'm always thinking two steps ahead for the other customers because everything that I do isn't just for one lot. Like when you buy yarn, there's only so much you can do with yarn itself. But when you're buying your bats and everything else, I'm um, including other fibre crafters in those as well. So yeah, definitely need to start doing some research and get me old books out. This is where we are. One o'clock. So I think I've been on here just shy of, oh, yeah, 50 minutes or something. So I'm going to get on with this. I've got four more that I need to warp up. And then... I'll get recording some um, bits of me actually warping it. But thank you very much, everybody, for joining in with me today. Um, I know you're all busy, but I really appreciate you taking out a little bit of time out of your day. You take care of yourselves, and I will see you during the week. Bye.